Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. We see that the fallen angels lose a sort of freedom and not have any free will of their own, it would seem. They're subject to another, they're subject to God. But it's a good question, especially for this, re- this, this weekend. What exactly is the freedom of the angels fallen or the good angels that follow the Lord? Do they have a free will? It seems to us that the angels would be static. They, we know they make a response to God right the first moment of their creation. And that's possible because they don't have a body. They're intelligences that receive their knowledge from God directly. So they don't need time to think things over. They can see the full ramifications of something right away. They don't need the passage of time or the use of the senses or the use of a brain to consider. They know. And they choose. They choose God or they choose their own way. And that they did. But it doesn't mean they're not considered to choose. They choose their path, but that choice is something not one time, but constant. And that's where they find themselves. The good angels choosing beatitude, choosing God, choosing to do His will. The evil angels choosing to do their own will. The same with, then, the souls. Souls, as St. Thomas Aquinas says, souls buried in the mis- misery of hell are not deprived of free choice. Even though their will, their faculty to choose, is immovably attached to evil. But then he says, the same way the blessed, the saints, retain the power of free choice, although their will is fixed on the good. And so the fallen angels and the damned have a free will. The blessed, the saints, and the good angels have will. What are they choosing? They make their choices, right? Choice is something, like I said, that's constant. Yes, they make a decision for the direction of, of who they are and what they are in eternity. But what St. Thomas Aquinas is talking about, where do they use their free choice? First we see in, in, in the limited scope of the damned or the, or the fallen angels. They choose for themselves. They chose, chose their vices. And they've wrapped in their life or in their moment, first moment of creation, in the case of angels, wrapped it around that pride. Or in the case of someone on earth, anger, lust. And that's something they've chosen. That's their treasure, you know. The Lord says, where your treasure is, that is where your heart will be. So that's what they become, in a sense. They've chosen that, never repenting. And in eternal life, they continue to choose that. Dante describes that, a part of the, the comedy most of us have read in school, that's, they're all wrapped up in their sins still. They're not just being punished, they're still wrapped up in the misery of their sins. So that even in, in this life and in the next, they're still slaves. They're not free. They choose to, to continue the vice in a sense. And their scope is limited. They have free will and free choice, but it's the framework is much reduced because they reduce that framework. The angels and saints are different. If any of you, or no many of us, have a relationship with the mother of God, or the angels or the saints, they are not static. They are not plaster figurines. They are quite dynamic. And they are constantly choosing, they are constantly exercising their will in that primary virtue, love. Love is not a passive thing. They love God. And that they, they continue to act on that. It comes from that part. They know God and they love Him. They continue then to do that act. And they turn towards the earth and they look upon us and they love us and they desire which is best for us. They want us to then know their freedom, the freedom of of God. So it is that we can see in the saints our own path, our own path for freedom. Of course, a good thing to consider this weekend is the freedom in this nation. That one of the compatible things with American thought and our own, basically because in this, this part does come from Catholic theology, is what we hold to be rights that are, belong to the dignity of each human person, especially the citizens of this nation. And that is then the um, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 
this kind of freedom. But we see, whether it's in the Catholic faith or in this nation, it was never meant to be a freedom to do what we want. A freedom to do what I want and forget everyone else is precisely what the demons chose in the beginning. It's precisely what those who have, who have caused their own damnation have chosen. For us, we follow the saints. We should. And it has to be broader. The vision of freedom has to be broadened. And where do we find that freedom? In theology and in the catechism, freedom is always tied up with responsibility. And that seems burdensome, but when we reflect on the saint's example of freedom, that is a freedom to love, a freedom always directed outward, never then seeking self, but living the the love that St. Paul describes, love of God, and that unselfish love of neighbor. The catechism, our theology, even the founding documents of this nation speak of that freedom directed towards the other, for the other, for the people. And that needs to be our freedom, a freedom that serves, a freedom that is caught up in the will of God. We can reflect again on the chosen people, the Israelites, who escape slavery and yet are given immediately a law. But they're not slaves to this law. If we look at the law, it is a pathway to freedom, a pathway to the mind of God. And in the first three commandments, the freedom that they did not have in Egypt to worship the Lord. And in the seven, to treat each other well and to seek the good of the other, not oppressed by the Egyptians, but now finding a way to freedom away from sin and vice to the freedom of the children of God, away from those things in us that bind us then and limit our scope, like the fallen angels or the damned, and opening the way to a wider scope that is that will of God himself. When we seek freedom in the will of God, in the mind of God, sometimes we're reluctant to do so because Who wants to give up their freedom to another, even if it be the Lord? Sometimes we even get the impression that we need to submit our will to the Lord. And that's that's true. We should. But is that so bad? We see in the parable of the prodigal son how the father reminds the older son when the other one is complaining about how he really, how the younger son is getting better treated and how he has nothing. The father in the story reminds him that, did you not know that everything I have is yours? In this parable, this is God speaking to us. We are called in our life to bring into union our will, our choices, our desires with those of the Lord. To make our will his will. To make our desires his desires. To make what we love what he loves. This is what it means to be Catholic and Christian. And it's here we find freedom. Because there in the one who is most free, God, we share in the widest scope of freedom possible. And this is what the apostles discover. This is what the saints discover. This is what the angels discover. And it doesn't mean the annihilation of us. It means a fulfillment of ourselves. Because one of the mysteries of discovering the will of God especially in our own lives, is that we find what the Lord wants us to be and what will make us most happy. This happiness, then, is what we seek. This very nation used to be directed towards that, seeking uh, the pursuit of happiness. We take that deeper. It's a particularly Catholic concept. All people naturally possess the desire for the true happiness, Beatitude, the vision of God, to be united with God. It's something within us even before baptism. And this is our desire. And this, then, is what we seek. The damned and the fallen angels, their scope is not only smaller, but their object is, 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 is not good. What I mean is, where is their heart directed? Towards some physical thing, or sort of towards themselves, towards pride. But we see that even before our own baptism, 
we are directed towards happiness. We are directed towards God. And that's what must define our whole life. That's what defines our vocation. That's what defines our life choices. That defines what you and I do today. What I say to somebody else. What I do in the privacy of my home. What I think about. What I say to others. It's all one. It's all one stream of, of God's will. The Lord reminds the apostles to look broader here. They discover something amazing that the word, the name of Jesus casts out demons from those who are suffering. And the Lord says, this is good, but do not rejoice here. Rather rejoice. Look higher. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Rejoice because your names are written in the book of life. Rejoice because your names are written on my heart. Already, that's what we need to be. To live in this life, just as the saints did, to live in this life as ones who are truly sanctified, truly the blessed, truly then called to be like Christ. We know, as Catholics especially, that we struggle with sin still. But we strive in this life to have the freedom of the, son, the sons of God, the freedom of the saints. And so the saints desire for us as well. So let us then, in this weekend that we reflect on freedom, with the scripture readings and, and the national holiday, Independence Day, we reflect on our own freedom in our life and ask then the Lord to ever direct us away from that kind of freedom of the damn, that freedom from stuff and responsibility and others, to that freedom for others, to love God, that freedom truly in our heart to be free from sin and vice, to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves.